tool for. There's testing called visual regression testing. Um, the tool I like to use is called Backstop.js. There are lots of alternatives. I'm not trying to pitch one thing. Use what is best for you. But all it does is takes a headless browser. So Chrome can actually run without a UI. It can run on the command line. It can go in, spin up a website, take a screenshot of it. Then take a screenshot of uh, the live site versus our staging site, right? We have two screenshots, and it will programmatically go pixel by pixel and show the difference. In this case, we have some text color went from blue to green. But it also noticed that the read more link changed too, and not just the headings. Like those little things when I talked about the search bar earlier, that that's easy for us to miss. If we have a computer taking two screenshots and going pixel by pixel analyzing, it's not going to miss anything. And guess what? I don't have to spend the brain power sitting there hunting to see if anything's changed. I don't have to spend that time and uh, mental energy doing that. I can focus on my work. And it, you get a nice report. So I'll show you guys really quick how this works. Um, if I run WordPress updates on a site, I wrote this little note app that takes advantage of this tool. I have a list of all of my sites where I've saved the URLs for the live site and my staging site, and I pick one. So I'll just pick the first one here, and away it goes. Chrome is spinning up. It's taking those screenshots of the live site, shutting down those browsers, spinning some more up, taking screenshots um, of my staging site, and then it's comparing them. And then it comes up, and I get this report in my browser. I can see exactly what changed. Um, so I come in here. And if I look, hey, it caught the search bar change straight away. I get some nice tools, like the scrubber, so I can see a before and an after. And another thing I didn't notice, uh, right above the input box, it looks like now there's a label that wasn't there before. Maybe that was hidden with CSS or something. And then all I have to do is analyze this and determine if what's changed is acceptable. And if not, I can go in and adjust it. So in this case, I might adjust the search bar back to the way it was because I know the client will complain. That's what I want to be doing, is fixing the thing that the client considers broken in production. I don't want to be checking to figure out if it's there in the first place, right? Um, so we really want to offload all of that. So now that we're kind of opening up this world, let's keep going a little bit. Like, how far can we go down this happy path of automating all of the testing and all the things we do? Hopefully, you're all familiar with version control. You know, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab. If you've ever submitted anything to WordPress core, you've worked with SVN, unfortunately. Um, version control has been around for a long, long time. And so this little node app that I wrote locally, well, that's great for me to run, but what about other people on my team? Or how do I remember to run this every single time? There are continuous integration providers out there. There are a whole ton of them. I usually use CircleCI, but again, use what's best for you. If your team uses GitLab, they have this built in. Um, if you use Bitbucket, they have pipelines, is what they call it. There's tons of these tools out there. Uh, Travis, Circle, whatever you use, but they are servers that will go in and you can take the script you've written and it will run it uh, automatically. So any workflow I can dream up in my head, we have the tools to automate these processes. If you want to um, send code to your staging environment, I can do that on the command line, which means I can script it. Uh, and then I take these scripts, I define a workflow with all the scripts I've written. Um, so you might do things like build production assets. If you run Grunt or Gulp or Webpack or something locally to get the SAS you're writing or whatever into minified CSS, that can happen automatically. You just need to take that script and put it on a CI um, provider and have that take care of it for you. Deployments. So every time I open a pull request on GitHub, I actually spin up a new, um, Pantheon calls them multi-devs, but if you could spin up another staging site, right, and have one for every pull request, and now I get a link 
right back in GitHub. So somebody can come in, do a code review, but they can also just click the button that says visit site and go see what it looks like without having to pull down the code on their local machine and you know apply those changes and see what's going on. They can review the code and what it looks like in one place. I can run the visual test we were talking about when every pull request uh, is open. In this case, the sidebar color changed. That's intentional. The pull request, request from the client, said please change the sidebar color. But if the report shows this, again, all I'm using my power for is this what I expected, yes or no. If the sidebar, uh, if the search bar also broke or something else on the site, it would point that out. So I don't, again, I don't have to hunt for it. I can go and look at this PR. The code looks like the CSS changed, the colors changed, the visual report tells me so. They don't even have to go click this button and see for themselves anymore. The screenshot's already there. Right? So taking all of this off of our plate so that this tedious process of checking every single thing that we should be doing on every single change we make, now that's a reality because we're not doing, doing it anymore. The robots are doing it. And they're doing it every single time. Visual regression tests have some limits. Um, it's a really great baseline test to run. Because chances are, if you update all your plugins and something's really jacked up, then screenshots of the site are going to catch that. There are some things you'll have to ignore uh, that you can't visually test for. So if you have a rotating carousel or an ad that changes every time, that's going to make it have some false positives. So you can ignore the ads, but then you need to have another test to make sure your ads still work. Because I bet that's important to the client too. Right? Um, or a visual test won't tell you if the donation form on a nonprofit website is failing. There are other tests for that, though. There are tests that will fill out the form, make sure it submits, and that you see the thank you screen. Or that you could write a test that will go in and log into wherever they're receiving the donation and make sure the amount showed up, right? Like, you can write tests for all of that stuff. There's plenty of tools out there. I'm not going to cover everything, but Look at what you're doing now, and if what you're doing now is the visual checking we're talking about, uh, start there with the visual test. And then go in and maybe add some browser testing so that you can not have to test IE because that is a terrible thing to do, right? Nobody wants to do that. It's not fun. So automate those things that you're already doing now that kind of suck. And you know what? If you still have to test the donation form manually, you're still saving a bunch of time by not having to do the other stuff, right? And so you can um, just take that time and just keep going, like build this stuff over time. So maybe now if your visual stuff is automated and we don't have to spend our time doing that QA, well, maybe I can start manually examining performance um, and making sure the site's up to date. And then once I get that dialed in, I can write a script for it. There's a great tool called Lighthouse from Google. It runs in the Chrome browser in your dev tools, but they also have a command line node package that you can run. So you can give it a URL and it will come back with the score for performance, accessibility, SEO. And I have it set up so that if my performance score drops more than five points, then I get an alert, right? And I don't want to commit any code to my site that performance is going to go down. So visual is a great baseline, but there's other stuff. If I update all my plugins and things visually work fine, but the site is 30% slower, that's not OK either, right? And queuing it like this, if we go back to being honest with ourselves, every single change we push up, we're not going around to different pages on the site and opening dev tools and running a full network trace and like figuring out if our performance has changed. Right? We don't all have a spreadsheet somewhere where we're keeping a log of that. It just doesn't happen. But if we automate it, it can happen every single time. Um, and so this is just a screenshot from Circle CI showing all the different things I've, I've set up run. So first, I need to com you know, compile my production CSS. Then I need to deploy it to a staging server. Then I run tests. Then I do all these things. Right. Um, so that workflow you can dream up comes in. These all have great integration with the version control you're working with. Um, so you can come in, and if all the lights are green, you're good to go. You can merge it. 
But if one fails, if my performance test fails, you can actually set rules on GitHub that protect the master branch. So if I'm working with another developer or I'm managing a team, I can enforce these rules in such a way that they cannot introduce new code that drops performance by more than the five points. Like set those limits. And they might not even know because if we're being honest, again, we're not doing that testing, so we might not know that which chunk of code drop performance. And that's the whole point is we want to test for it and get those things away from production and make sure they don't happen. So that we can get to this workflow where we're doing continuous integration and continuous testing. So we're always pushing up our changes and we're testing the entire site every single time on every single change. I have this up on GitHub. If you want to check it out, there's uh, that example where I open up a pull request and all those steps run. Um, it works on Pantheon, but you can you know, modify it to work wherever. So if you have a digital ocean box, you may have to change the Pantheon commands to create a staging server to like SSH to wherever you're going. Right? You might have to do a little bit of work, but you can take a look at the scripts I've written for testing, for deploying, all of that, um, and have a good starting point. All right, and there's a ton of benefits you get from adopting this workflow where we're testing the entire site every single time. Developers are pushing up their code changes with version control frequently to let those tests run so we can catch problems. The first is reduced overhead. We've kind of talked about this a lot. We don't do this every single time because it's too much work. But even the visual stuff, like I showed that little node app, if you're checking that manually, even if you just run a little node app like this or automate the visual piece of it without automating all the other tests, you're already reducing overhead, saving that time. And then you can reinvest your time to automate the next piece and the next piece and the next piece until you don't spend any time doing QA um, other than just analyzing the results of the test. You get consistency because it's happening every single time, right? If you have a team of developers, Maybe one person is really good and they open up dev tools and they test performance on every single change they make. Do you think that happens team wide? What happens if you work at a place at 10 up that's over 100 people? Do you think if people are doing manual QA, even if there's a checklist, that that's followed 100% of the time by every single person on the team? Probably not. You can get close if you're you know really diligent, but if you set this up and script it and automate it, it will happen the same way every single time. I've also seen where even uh, if you're not like compiling SAS in an automated way, people are running Grunt or Gulp or Webpack or whatever on their local machine, their version of Node is different, their version of SAS is different. With the same source files, the outputted production files are different. There's inconsistencies in the process just because everyone's machine is different. If we're running that process uh, in an automated way, it's running on the same machine in the cloud every single time. So we get consistency that way. You mitigate risk. We're all fearful that we're gonna break the production website. That's the whole point, is we don't wanna break the live site. So if we test it every single time on every single change, then we're mitigating a, bun a bunch of the risk of deploying a bug or breaking the site. And that gives us confidence it gives our clients confidence. Um, I work in a lot of open source repositories uh, and projects. And if I'm working on one for the first time, and I go in and submit a pull request, and first time I'm working on this project, and then I see all these tests fire off, and all the lights come back green, I have confidence as a new contributor that the code I'm introducing in this project I'm not super familiar with is not going to break anything. The person reviewing it and accepting the PR from this person that they've never worked with is confident that nothing's going to break, right? That process is a lot better for everyone involved. And finally, you get reliable communication. Probably the coolest thing I've seen an agency do is they put JIRA ticket numbers inside of their Git commits. They were working on this distribution that would go out to a bunch of different clients, right? They kind of pick one of five themes. They were managing this whole thing for their clients, managing their plugin updates and everything. The clients would have different feature requests, and the project managers would want to know if the feature their client wanted went out in this latest release, right? And they would release like every two weeks. Um, 
And so developers had to go in after the release, figure out what actually made it in, go update Jira. It was inconsistent. Um, and project managers would have to hunt down and figure out if what they did made it. And they put the Jira ticket numbers in their Git logs, and then every time they released, they just use Git to tell me, what's the difference between this release and the last one? Let's just loop through all those commits, and if we find Jira ticket numbers, call the Jira API and close those tickets because they're now in production. So the developers don't have to go untangle and figure out what went. The project managers don't have to uh, hunt people down and figure out if what they wanted got into the release. They can notify their clients right away. As soon as that release was up, within like five minutes, Jira was up to date. Reliable communication every single time. That's a huge benefit to an organization. I know this has kind of been a lot already, right? And it's the second day, <laughs> Sunday, we're kind of like afternoon talk. All right, guys, we're gonna power through a little bit more because I started with WordPress updates, and if we think deeper about that process, what do we do? We check if a site has updates, if there's no updates, then maybe we just let the client know, hey, you have a maintenance retainer with us. We check for updates, just nothing there, but just let you know we're doing our job. If there are updates, then maybe we spin up a new environment, we update the plugins, we do our visual check, we maybe test the critical items like the donation form or whatever. Um, so after we do all that, if we find issues, we go fix them. If there are no more issues and the testing looks good, then we deploy our updates, right? But then look at this last one, repeat for all sites. So I'm betting if you manage sites for clients, a lot of your uh, overhead from people on your team is spent running updates, checking those updates, and deploying them out, right? Spend hours and hours every single week. Even if you run updates once a week for each client, if you manage 15 clients, you're logging into two sites a day, maybe three sites a day if you're not working weekends like a crazy person, right? Well, modern software updates uh, don't work like this. You have Dropbox or Chrome or Slack or whatever. A lot of software automatically updates itself. So it's huge for security, functionality. How can we get that in WordPress? WordPress core has had automatic updates since 2013, but they only update core and they only update minor versions. Uh, it's a good start, but guess what? It runs straight on production, and if we extend that out to include plugins and themes, what are we trying to avoid? The whole goal is not breaking production, so we don't want to click update all plugins and cross our fingers. That's what we've gotten away from. So we want to be able to update plugins and themes, we want to have a QA process and make sure we don't break the site. So we need to test, right, after we run updates. And I think we can do that in a fully automated way. We have all of these tools. If I can run tests every time I open a pull request, why can't I run tests, you know, once a week, once a day, and automatically run these updates? So we get automatic updates, automatic testing, uh, and if we get that, we have the best of both worlds, right? So instead of repeating for all sites, if you have a process like this that you're doing manually, um, automation scales. I could go in and write a script that would create a new staging site, run WordPress updates, run all these automated tests, right? If things visually look good, I have a test for the form, I have whatever enough coverage that I'm confident with all these tests passed, I can ship the update, I can scale that out, and guess what? It can run in parallel for all my sites at the same time. All of these CI providers have a cron feature where you can go in and set it to run every day, every week, every hour, whatever you want. And it can fire off and update every single site all at the same time. If the first one has no updates, that job dies, and it moves on to the next site, and so on. And I actually have this wired up. I've been running it for about a year and a half. It started just running on one site. I figured out I could scale it to many. I maintain a lot of demos in different sites for uh, Pantheon. And when I'm traveling and speaking and consulting with clients, 
running updates on all these sites I have to maintain for the demo for the client the next day was a big pain in taking away time that I really didn't have to spend. So I updated the entire, uh, automated the entire process, and now I just get notifications on Slack. And every once in a while, all the plugin updates, a test will fail. I just have to go in. We saw the test reports. It tells me exactly what failed. I fix it and I move on. I'm not spending hours and hours and hours running updates on demo sites anymore. Uh, you could also apply this to client sites. Still bill them for maintenance, but reduce the overhead that you're spending doing that. Right? And so this example is on GitHub as well. Um, again, it's set up to work with Pantheon because that's my use case, but feel free to use it for whatever you like. And just kind of a summary of these benefits, right? You want to, uh, of adopting this and the benefits is test on every single change. And don't just test what you're kind of, maybe I looked at the homepage. That's not good enough. Test the entire functionality of the, of the entire site. Do that in an automated way so it's actually possible and sane to do that. Enforce those rules. Uh, it's going to be an upfront amount of work to write these tests. But I've had this automated update uh, process with testing running for, like I said, about a year and a half. I put in maybe a week of work up front, getting it going, and I started with the visual test. And then I realized that the sites got slow, even though things visually looked okay. And I added Lighthouse, and I kind of stacked it up. But that time I put in is so paid off. Like all these long-term benefits that I don't have to worry about it. It's consistent, right? I'm mitigating risks that I'm not shipping bad things. I have confidence that the sites are up to date all the time. And it's reliably communicated because there's just this running Slack channel telling me what's going on. Right? You can have all these benefits uh, for your team as well. And so I'll end with automation is a journey. You know, don't try and go from zero to 100 and auto updating all of your sites right away. Start with what you're doing now. Um, maybe add the visual piece and automate that because that's something you're actually spending time on. And then again, save that time and reinvest it. And just some resource links, again, the repositories, some tools I find useful, and then some uh, blog posts. So Martin Fowler, if you want to read more about the philosophy of continuous integration, is a great source. Uh, and then Carl Alexander, um, you might know him as Twitpress, has a great blog on getting started with CI and WordPress. That's a really good read. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you very much. And we have a few minutes for some questions. If you have a question, please uh, come up to the microphone up front and ask you. Don't be shy. Hi. Um, so when you're Yeah, um, I am. So you could do that if you did.